Hey, what's up guys? So for those of you that don't know, Derek from More Plates, More Dates just released his testosterone optimization uh, product known as Sigma that he formulated alongside Andrew Huberman. However, the reason I'm making this video is because they included a fairly controversial ingredient in their product known as Fidoja Agrestis, which I have been fairly critical of in the past because of its possible toxicity. Oh my God, no way. Now, because of the video that I did on Fidoja Agrestis several months ago, I've been getting a ton of questions uh, to do a video review on his formulation and product, um, as well as a ton of questions on whether or not my opinions on Fidoja Agrestis have changed since I released my first video. So essentially what I want to do in this video is clarify some of the statements that I made in my previous video, um, as well as dive a little bit deeper into the toxicity data so that you guys can um, get a better idea of whether or not this is something that you would like to take. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now for anyone that's not super familiar with the controversy surrounding Fidoja Agrestis. Um, about a year ago, Andrew Huberman went on to the Joe Rogan experience and um, was talking about uh, ways to optimize testosterone levels and mentioned a couple of supplements that could be used to increase testosterone, uh, namely Fidoja Agrestis and Tonkat Ali. And um, ever since he went on that podcast, uh, the market for these supplements has absolutely exploded. However, a few months after after uh, Andrew went on the Joe Rogan experience, I did a video outlining my concerns about the possible toxicity of Fidoja Agrestis. And that video has gained a lot of momentum here on YouTube as well as on Reddit in some specific forums. Now, to be clear, I am a huge fan of both Andrew and Derek. I think they are some of the brightest minds in kind of the arena of men's health. Um, they don't appear to be dogmatic at all, which is something that I highly appreciate. And they both appear to be extremely genuine guys um, and so this is by no means a video bashing them or their opinions uh, to be quite frank I have a very high opinion of both of them if you were a chick who's the one guy you would sleep with now, the criticism that I've gotten most often since I released my initial video on Fidoja Agrestis is that the dosages that were used in the rodent trials were extremely high and therefore don't correlate over into human dosages. And though I didn't talk about this directly in my initial video, this is actually not true at all. Now, there are two primary studies that have been performed in order to assess the toxicity of Fidoja Doja Agrestis. And in both of these studies, they used a dosage schedule of 18, 50, and 100 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Now, what most people end up doing in order to get a human equivalent dose is that they will end up just taking their body weight in kilograms and multiplying it by these dosages to get a human equivalent dosage. Unfortunately, this is not how this works. It is generally accepted that in order to properly calculate a a human equivalent dosage from a rodent dosage that you first have to divide the rodent dosage by 6.2 before you calculate a human equivalent dosage. Now this is for several reasons however it is namely because rodents have a much lower uh, body surface volume as well as a much higher metabolism and so because of this you just can't take a rodent dosage and then immediately calculate the human equivalent dosage. And if we're going to take this generally accepted approach of calculation, you actually get a human equivalent dosage roughly equal to 2.9 8.1 and 16.1 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, which for a 200 pound uh, male equals roughly 260, 725, and 1450 milligrams, which is very much in line with the typical recommended dosages. Now, this is not to say that there isn't still some nuance when it comes to uh, calculating human equivalent dosages from rodent dosages. However, there does appear to be some level of toxicity uh, with Fidoja Agrestis even at lower dosages. Now, Andrew and Derek have both been fairly clear and open about the risk of toxicity and um, side effects when it comes to uh, using Fidoja Agrestis. However, until we have more data, I do believe that these um, risks should be taken somewhat seriously. Now, another uh, common criticism that I've gotten uh, regarding my initial video on Fidoja is that I was 
was extremely dismissive of Fedoja's ability to increase testosterone in rodents, but was not dismissive of its toxicity in rodents. And the reasoning here is that, hey, Zach, if you're going to brush off the possibility of uh, Fedoja increasing testosterone just because it's only been demonstrated in, in rodents, why aren't you also just simply brushing off the possibility of side effects um, simply because they have also only been demonstrated in rodents. And to some degree, this is actually a fair criticism. However, my reasoning here is that if you're going to be taking um, unproven and experimental supplements to increase testosterone, um, you have to take into account the risk to reward ratio. And what I mean by this is if you're going to be taking an unproven supplement, ideally, you want it to have an extremely um, safe safety profile. And my reasoning here is what's the point of taking something um, that might increase testosterone if the risk of side effects and toxicity are just as likely. However, I do think it is important to keep in mind here that this is very, very case dependent and dependent on circumstances. Uh, for instance, if you actually do have low testosterone and clinically low testosterone, uh, the risks of having low testosterone in some individuals might actually be higher than the risks of toxicity. Now, because of all of this, this is one of the reasons that I um, included Fedoja aggressus as one of the experimental compounds uh, that could be used to increase testosterone in my complete guide to supplementation. However, if you are interested in checking out and learning more about some of the supplements that I consider to be um, complementary and foundational to increasing and optimizing testosterone production, um, I would definitely recommend checking checking out the link in the description to gain access to that uh, complete guide to supplementation. Now, with all of that being said, and after having a handful of conversations with Derek about why he included uh, Fedoja Agrestis in his formulation, um, I actually don't believe the risks of side effects and the risk of toxicity to be as great as I once thought. Now, there are a couple of reasons for this. However, the first reason is that when I shot my original video, one thing that I did not take into account was the time of exposure. Now, Derek has done a fantastic job of outlining his thought process on that um, in his own video. However, just to kind of like give a synopsis of it here, when you are converting rodent dosages to human dosages, it is important and extremely important to keep in mind um, that a single day in rodents is not equal to a single day in humans. So now all of these studies that were performed um, on the toxicity of Fedoja used a dosing uh, schedule of roughly 1 to 28 days. And what this means is that one day in rodents is roughly equal to about 30 days of supplementation in humans, and 28 days of supplementation in rodents is roughly equal to about three years in humans. Now, the reason this is so important is that there is a theoretical safe zone when it comes to uh, Fedoja aggressive supplementation, meaning that um, you could possibly take it for up to 30 days um, and experience the benefits of taking Fedoja aggressive without out experiencing some of the signs of toxicity. Now, the second reason that I don't believe uh, the risk of toxicity with Fedoja aggressus to be as high as I once thought is that it is entirely possible um, that Fedoja aggressus is toxic to rodents, but not to humans. Now, I think one of the clearest examples of this is with something like chocolate that is fairly toxic to dogs, but is not toxic to humans. Now, if I was talking to someone like uh, Paul Saladino, he would probably make a fairly strong argument as to why uh, he thinks chocolate is toxic to humans. However, my point still stands. Um, humans do have the ability to process enzymatically um, the, the compounds that are in chocolate. However, um, dogs just don't have that. And so it is entirely possible that this is a similar case with Fedoja in that the rodents just simply don't have the enzymatic processes necessary to properly digest and break 
down uh, the compounds that are in Fidoja. Now, this is not to say that the risk of side effects and toxicity with Fidoja is zero. There is some evidence to suggest um, that there might be some uh, kidney and liver enzyme elevation even after a single day in rodent trials, um, which roughly equates to about 30 days of supplementation in humans. So again, the risk here isn't zero. However, it does still create some room for this uh, theoretical safe zone um, with uh, Fidoja agrestis supplementation. Now, when it comes to the actual side effects of Fidoja, one of the only side effects that I have um, heard from reports is that uh, there might actually be too much of a stimulation of the lytic cells to produce testosterone. Um, and this might be where some of the toxicity um, is coming from when it comes to specifically the testicular toxicity. However, if you are taking Fidoja and do kind of experience like achy junk, so to speak. Um, I would discontinue um, Fidoja aggressus use. However, it just isn't super clear um, just how high this risk is yet. So what's the takeaway here? Well, the takeaway is if you're going to take Fidoja aggressus, I would highly recommend getting some dang blood work done first. Now, for any of you guys that have been following my content for a while, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of at-home testing. However, in this particular instance, I do believe that it would be in your best interest to get something um, a little bit more comprehensively done. Now, the reason for this is that when you are taking something like Fidoja, there are a handful of things that you want to be uh, keeping an eye on, namely gonadotropin levels and specifically LH levels and ensuring they're not going super, super high because when LH levels do go through the roof, there is, again, that risk of overstimulating the lytic cells of the testes to produce testosterone, which may lead to some level of toxicity. So you want to be keeping an eye on that, um, as well as your kidney and liver enzymes. Now, another thing that you want to be testing is obviously your testosterone levels to see if Fidoja is actually something that you actually need. Because if you don't need um, an increase in testosterone, you may not need to take something like Fidoja. Now, if you guys are interested in getting a full um, panel like this done, I would highly recommend my friends over at Merrick health. They have a fantastic full panel that you guys can access in the description. So uh, just go down there and click on the link and it will take you directly to that page. Now, if you are considering taking Fidoja, I would just straight up just go take Sigma uh, Derek's product. He did a fantastic job of formulating it um, with some other compounds that I've talked about extensively on my channel, things like ashwagandha and Tonkali and boron. And so he has a fantastic uh, formula that they have produced over there. And so if you're interested in taking something like that, uh, again, there's going to be a link in the description where you guys can follow um, to purchase that. But other than that, guys, make sure to check out that complete guide to supplementation. If supplementation is something that you are particularly interested in, it will be an extremely invaluable resource to you. But other than that, uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, and I will see you guys next time.